What a way to end the week. The CEO of Lucid Motors, Peter Rawlinson's interview on CNBC sparked hope for Lucid and CCIV SPAC merger. CCIV stock rallied after Peter was on air. CCIV closed on Friday at $34.65 or up 14.66% on a $4.43 gain. When asked about its merger with CCIV, Peter could neither deny nor confirm that. So what does it mean? What is the rally all about then? And what else do you need to know? In this video, I will answer all these questions. You probably want to watch all the way to the end, so stick around. Sorry, that's hello in Thai, and welcome to Quantum Finance. My name is Anthony, and I'm a former engineer and data analyst turned entrepreneur and investor. In my prior career, I was very successful in creating predictive models for Fortune 500 companies in Silicon Valley using historical data to predict future outcomes. I applied my knowledge to my own portfolio, and in the past 12 months, I grew it to more than 500%. In this channel, I focus on high growth and disruptive technology stocks for short term momentum trades and long term investments. If you're new, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back and thank you for your support. Please help us grow this small channels to 5,000 subscribers by hitting the sub button below. Make sure to hit the notification button so you get my latest video update. While you're at it, please do like, share, and comment. Let me know what your thoughts are below. I will see you down there. Please note that this video is for entertainment purpose only. I am not licensed. However, that does not mean that I won't present you with facts and trading ideas that will supercharge up your portfolio. No BS and straight to the point. So let's get right into it. If you're new to the Lucid and CCIV merger news and want to know more in details, please check out my prior videos. As I don't want to repeat a lot of the circumstantial evidences in this video. I will, however, provide a quick and short recap for those who are new to the Quantum Finance channel. On January 11, 2021, Bloomberg announced that Churchill Capital, a blank check company from Michael Klein, was planning to take Lucid Motors public. Investors have been bidding up CCIV stock in a frenzy because of its electric vehicle disruptor status. However, the uncertainty of the SPAC merger has caused some volatility. Just last week, the Saudi's public investment fund was in talk with Lucid to build a second production facility in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, which weighed on CCIV shares. Then earlier this week, the Wall Street Journal wrote an article claiming the merger announcement was far from happening, creating a plunge on CCIV share price. Make sure to watch my other CCIV manipulation video to understand what actually happened if you have not already done so. On February 4th, Peter Rawlinson was featured on the front page of Forbes magazine. The special interview article provide hope for a SPAC merger. In particular, he stated that he had previously considered SPAC a, quote, dirty word, unquote. Peter went on to say, quote, that was the financier's view. That was the Wall Street's view of SPACs not so long ago. I think I would say what a difference a year makes. Unquote. However, Peter did not confirm any specific plan. I've also provided a link to the Forbes article below. This morning, investors were eagerly anticipating to hear what Peter had to say on CNBC interview. Shares of CCIV spike up in early mornings after the opening bell. As you know, Peter is a former Tesla engineer and it's interesting to note that Peter is quite exciting to CCIB bulls. After all, Peter knows the ins and out of the EV leader, Tesla. Let's listen in to what Peter said in the CNBC interview hosted by Favor and Kramer. As the competition in the electronic vehicle or electric vehicle industry heats up with a possible entry by Apple, Lucid Motors, well, it's one of the EV startups that has garnered a great deal of attention. We're very happy to have Lucid CEO Peter Rawlinson join us now to discuss the industry overall. Uh, Peter, good to have you. you know, where is Lucid's place going to be in this industry, given a potential entrant from Apple years from now? But more specifically, Tesla, obviously, uh, GM committing so much to the industry, Ford, and even the luxury automakers in Europe as well starting to ramp things up. Where, do you, where does your company fit? Well, you see our very first vehicle, the Lucid Air, in the background behind me, and we're aiming initially, unashamedly, at the luxury space. Luxury cars are dominated by the grandy marks, Mercedes, Audi, BMW, Porsche, and they all have one thing in common. They're all gasoline. So there isn't an electric luxury car available in the market. That's our first position. But progressively, we'll make cars more affordable and we'll increase our volume accordingly. You are going to start rather small, of course. I think it's what annual capacity, the first phase of 34,000 units. You expect to produce six to 7,000 units this year. Is that correct? And we're talking about where? A starting price for that vehicle around $70,000? 
That's absolutely right. The air starts at around 70,000, goes run up to 161,500 uh, for the Dream Edition, the model we're going to start with, a fantastic car. And we've already built our first phase of our factory in Arizona, which is good for 34,000 units. But that site ultimately will be capable of producing 400,000 cars a year when we implement phase four with our six-year plan. When is phase four coming? Mid-2000s, in 20s. Mid-2020, so it's a six-year yeah. plan. Yeah. Um, costs a lot of money to do that. Uh, we had Yasser al Ramayan on from the PIF last week uh, discussing, of course, in part their investment, uh, one of your significant holders. Do you have access to capital that you need in order to actually pull off all those phases? We do indeed, and, and, and the, the Public Investment Fund of Saudi Arabia have been great strategic partners. This is much more than a financial arrangement. This is a long-term strategic partnership. You're absolutely right, this is a capital-intensive business. But we've taken the approach, we need to be vertically integrated. There is no substitute for having in-house manufacturing and an in-house retail experience. So we're having our manufacturing in-house and all our studios, our studios, our retail studios, and we've already opened six of those right across the U.S. Uh, Peter, Jim Kramer, uh, as we talk, Again. I'm exploring the idea of reserving with a credit card the uh, Air Dream Edition, $161,000. Why am I doing that? Because it's available summer of 2021. How many other people are reserving their various Lucid Airs right now? And can you give me a sense of the demand each day? Well, it's overwhelming, Jim, and I'm really glad you have impeccable tastes, sir. Um, we have a bulging <laughs> order book. It's growing daily as people are becoming much more aware of us as a, as a company, as a brand. Uh, we were pretty silent. We were in almost stealth mode until our global reveal just last September. I like the car to do the talking, uh, and, you know, it's going to be an amazing product when it comes out th this year. But what do we do? I know you work with Elon Musk. You've got a, a cordial relationship with him. This is 517 uh, miles projected range, 800 horsepower. Obviously, that's a zero to a 60. I don't know in two seconds. What makes me what makes me want to pay this much more th than a Tesla? Everybody loves Tesla, don't they? I mean, high consumer satisfaction, that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely right. I mean, Tesla's done an amazing job, and that's what's placed it in its preeminent position. But Tesla recognizes this is a technology play. This is a technology race. That's why Tesla enjoys such a high market cap. And I'm really disappointed that the traditional uh, auto industry hasn't really taken up that baton and really compete with Tesla at the top table. Now, our car is competing overtly in the luxury space against the likes of Mercedes-Benz. So I don't really see us as a direct competitor as Tesla in the product. But it is a very valid comparison to compare us with Tesla in terms of our technology. And in a sense, Lucid is very similar position to where Tesla was 10 years ago. Tesla had the tech, the other entries didn't. And we see today a whole phalanx of startups in the EV space. They don't have the in-house technology. That's what differentiates Lucid. In-house technology, world-class electric vehicle tech. Right. Well, well, all right. Just give me a quick example of what that means. What is that? Well, the core metric is efficiency. It's not range per se, because anyone can stuff a whole load of batteries in a car and achieve great range. I could double the size of the battery pack, double the range of the car, couldn't I? And that's pretty dumb. I call that dumb range. And what really matters, the most telling metric of where any electric car company is today, there's a single metric, and that is efficiency. How far can I go per kilowatt hour? And we can go well over four miles per kilowatt hour. This is world-class technology here in the US. Lucid's going to take the tech 
the next level. That is our mission. Notice that Peter is very excited when he talks about Lucid and its technology. Key takeaway from this is that Lucid is not a competitor to Tesla when it comes to an EV car. Lucid differentiates itself as a technology company first, and this is where Lucid will compete head on against Tesla and other EV companies. While on air, Faber asked Peter to comment on the CCIV merger. Let's chime in on what Peter's response. All right, well, Peter, if I want to get a sense for how investors view your company, I need to look no further than shares of CCIV. That's the symbol for Churchill Capital 4. It's a SPAC. And I'm sure you're aware of the fact that the speculation around it has been that you will merge with it to go public. Um, is that the case? Well, you know I can't comment on any such matters. I can neither um, um, uh, confirm nor deny any such thing. Well, let me ask it in a different way, though. Given that you, we've watched... You guys be the judge of this. Is CCIV and Lucid merger going to happen or not? The story here continues to be very appealing, doesn't it? Did you notice Peter's facial reaction and body language and how he initially hesitated and carefully worded his answers with a big smirk on his face? Of course, Peter could not comment on the CCIV stock rumors or the SPAC merger announcement because of this SEC rule. Under the website sec.gov slash rules, under the New York Stock Exchange Company Manual, Section 2, Disclosure and Reporting Material Information, Section 202.03, dealing with rumors or unusual market activity, it clearly states that, quote, if rumors or unusual market activity indicate that information on impending developments has leaked out, a frank and explicit announcement is clearly required. If rumors are in fact false or inaccurate, they should be promptly denied or clarified, unquote. I have provided a link to the SEC rules below. You can click on it and read it for yourself. So what do you think? Personally, from what I see and how Peter responded to Favor's question, I can only conclude that the merger with CCIV is imminent. And if the merger is announced this Sunday via the Super Bowl advertisement or merger Monday, I anticipate CCIV to spike up even higher. As previously stated, CCIV will reach a $45 to $55 very quickly post-merger announcement. Just a reminder that we're still waiting for the requisite US Securities and Exchange Commission filings, or AKA the official merger confirmation. Without an official merger announcement, everything that Peter Rawlinson or Kevin Klein announces comes under great scrutiny. Today was no different. And with that, have a great weekend, guys. So there you have it. If you find the content of this video valuable, please hit the sub button below if you have not already done so. Please do like, share, and comment. Let me know what your thoughts are below. I will see you down there. Happy trading and investing. Let's go make some moolahs.